JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for July the 10th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar rebounded against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Thursday during the Asian Morning Friday. It gained the most against NOC, SEC, the Euro and the Oz in that order, while the currency against which it lost uh, some ground was the Japanese Yen. The strengthening of the dollar and the Yen, combined with the fact that the Oz was among uh, the main losers, suggests that financial markets turned back to risk of trading. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, most uh, major EU and US indices were a sea of red, with the only exception being Nasdaq. The tech-heavy index rose 0.63%, hitting its fifth record closing high in six days, held by gains in Amazon, Microsoft, Nvidia and Apple. It seems that tech stocks uh, remain unaffected from headlines raising fears with regards to the coronavirus as consumers could still use tech services even if uh, new lockdown measures are adopted around the globe. In any case, the negative uh, investor morale rolled over into the Asian session today with Japan's uh, Nikkei 225 and China Shanghai composites sliding 0.98 and 1.36% respectively. This was the first decline in Chinese stocks in more than a week. Perhaps investors saw yesterday's headlines and developments as an opportunity to book profits after the surge uh, to a five-year high. Now, with infected cases around the globe hitting a new record uh, yesterday, it's not strange why market participants decided to reduce their risk uh, exposure. The US also reported a new record, heightening fears of another round of lockdown measures in the world's uh, largest economy. Several states have already halted or reversed uh, their reopening, with, while in Australia, uh, in Australia, Melbourne, the nation's uh, second largest city, has begun a new shutdown. Yesterday we noted that as long as most of the globe continues to ease their first round of restrictions, we would see decent chances for equities to rebound and continue trending north. We still hold that view, but we will turn a bit more cautious now. If uh, more nations decide to stop their economic reopening or even uh, reintroduce uh, stay-at-home measures, the global economy may not be able to weather the heat and thus the damages could be much worse this time. This is the reason we see low chances for another uh, large-scale global lockdown, but again, we cannot rule uh, that scenario out. We would turn neutral for now with regards to equities and the broader market sentiment. We prefer to wait for a clear break above some key resistances before we start re-examining uh, the resumption of uh, the prevailing uptrends. Now, apart from headlines and developments surrounding the coronavirus, CAD traders will also pay close attention to Canada's employment data for June, due out later in the day. The unemployment rate is expected to have declined to 12% from 13.7%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has gained 700,000 jobs after adding 289.6 thousand in May. At its most recent meeting, the Bank of Canada kept interest rates unchanged and said that given the improvement in short-term funding conditions, it uh, reduced the frequency of its term rep operations and its program to purchase bankers' uh, acceptances. Officials also said that the Canadian economy appears to have avoided the most uh, severe scenario presented in the bank's April monetary policy report and that the economy is expected to resume to growth in the third quarter. However, with the headline inflation rate for May falling to minus 0.4% year-over-year from minus 0.2% and the core one sliding to plus 0.7% from 1.2%, 
it may need a very strong employment report to allow Canadian policymakers to stay comfortably on the sidelines for a while more. As for the rest of today's events, during uh, the early European morning, we already got to Norway's uh, CPIs for June. The headline rate ticked up to 1.4% year-over-year from 1.3% as was expected, while the core one inched up to 3.1% year-over-year from 3%. The forecast was for the core rate to stay unchanged. At uh, their latest meeting, Norge's bank officials kept interest rates uh, unchanged at 0%, repeating that they will keep them at that level for some time ahead. That said, they appear somewhat more optimistic than previously, saying that since the prior meeting activity has uh, picked up faster than expected, the unemployment has fallen more than anticipated, and oil prices have risen. Thus, with oil prices trading slightly higher than uh, back then, inflation rates near their May prints may allow policymakers to sit comfortably on the sidelines and reiterate their uh, sanguine language. From the US, we have the PPIs for June. The headline rate is forecast to have increased to minus 0.2% year over year from minus 0.8%, while the core one is anticipated to have ticked up to 0.4% year over year from 0.3%. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning uh, about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the, in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.